Hey, this is Rob Unspock, and welcome back to another edition of E-Heroes. This is episode 298, and our next guest hasn't been back, hasn't been on that show since episode 166, so it's been a couple of years. But I'm bringing her back because she has this awesome new program that I think everybody that's out there that maybe knows somebody that could benefit from this should really pay attention. And, and so... I want to bring back uh, Tatiana Sawyer, and we're going to talk about the Bookkeeper Project. So remember that, the Bookkeeper Project, because it's going to transform a lot of people's lives. So thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me, Rob. You know, when you when you when you told me about this this uh, this new project you have, I just I, I said, look, I got to get you back on here because I, I think everybody needs to have at least the knowledge to know what this is about, who it benefits, and why. And and so I I, I had somebody else scheduled for this episode. I pushed him back because I, I want people to know about this. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, this project has been quite a few years in the making. Um, I launched my bookkeeping course many years ago, and... Um, <clears throat> I really created it for two reasons, right, initially. Uh, reason number one was that we as CPAs who do good work, who actually check clients bookkeeping, who actually care about clients bookkeeping because of how important it is, because you know, good bookkeeping or bad bookkeeping influences how much taxes you pay, how quickly you will get audited and how well that audit goes. Um, I could just couldn't find people who would do good bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. uh, because, and, you know, and I was at a point where I needed to delegate. So I was like, okay, what do I do? And then I started looking for people and people have all kinds of resumes, but then um, those resumes mean nothing when you, um, when you start looking at their work. And so and that's very high quality, um, high standards for bookkeeping. So I started looking and what I've decided to do is instead of trying to find somebody, I decided to train them. Mm -hmm. And I've always said that accounting and bookkeeping are great careers and great skills for moms because, um, well, moms and women, because they'll, it allows you to make a really good living with, from your home and bookkeeping doesn't have any emergencies, doesn't have any, um, any stuff that really a mom wouldn't need. Like there is nothing like you don't have to work at this hour. You can work when the kid is asleep or what, you know, whatever, and make a decent living. Whereas a, as a VA, it's a little bit more limited in that way because you sometimes have to show up at a certain time and sometimes you can't do that. So you have to pay somebody to watch your child where bookkeeping is a great skill for moms. And this, this is what I was thinking about uh, when I was creating it. We've, we've, we've certainly expanded since then, but uh, I was thinking about moms kind of work, being able to work at any at any time, mm -hmm. um, using that work as their escape. Because you know, I don't know if you know, but parenthood, especially early on, is more like Groundhog Day every day. Um, so, so I started that. But then what I've realized is that uh, for many moms, and I've had pretty good success. I've hired people from my course. I've hired them to work for me. But what I found was that it was really hard to sell um, this course to moms uh, because often that $2,500 or whatever it costs um, is their last $2,500. And so what we've decided to do is um, I've learned, I've had the nonprofit, I've managed this nonprofit. Nonprofits generally don't belong to anyone. They're just managed by certain people. Mm -hmm. But I've had this charitable organization since 2012. And uh, we've always been committed to really um, expanding financial education, giving people tools to um, um, create financial independence for themselves, giving them skills for it. And so we've, I've always been passionate about it, but now I've, I've saw this opportunity to do so much good without forcing these moms, women, teens, and our, a couple of our target groups, which I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, without forcing them to pay their last money to get through this, this training. So um, basically I donate half of the cost of um, guiding a student through the program because it's going to be a cohort-based program. Mm -hmm. um, the course will be just a foundation of it. So there's going to be some um, technical knowledge and things like that, but then there's also going to be Q and A and technical support and everything else, case studies. And so um, 
the other half, I'm basically looking to get support from accounting firms and, and uh, financial firms and just people who want to do good and, and invest some of their charitable money, um, and get a deduction for it, of course, and um, and really affect people's lives like one by one. Yeah, you know, and 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 I'm sure that it's just not moms. It comes sometimes it could be you know stay at home dads, and and we're not trying to you know say hey you guys just aren't as good as moms, <laughs> but you know by and large, you know, women are at home. You know they're watching the kids. They're doing all this other stuff, and 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 you know my experience is they are better at numbers than men are. You know, and you know, my, my, you know, and for the exception of there are gr some great accountants out there that do wonderful work. Um, but I think, you know, moms retain that those numbers in their head faster than men do. I, I think we're just more ADHD <laughs> and, and sports oriented. And <clears throat> I think we all have the ability or capability to manage numbers it just starts with a desire i mean i have a, my own opinion on why often women aren't diving into numbers with passion um <laughs> i don't know if you care i could share it <laughs> um do you care yeah, go ahead. i mean it's it we have time yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> um in the u.s so my kids go to uh russian school of math it's uh it's called rsm it's it has a lot of locations around the country um, and it's basically two moms, actually, neither of them were Russian. One was the Ukrainian Jew and the other one was fellow Russian or whatever. But that doesn't matter. The, the concept of Russian mathematics. Um, <laughs> so their director, when my fir kids first started, their director, their uh, their program explained that in the U.S., um, mathematics is not taught well because um, it's taught very simply kind of through elementary school and then middle school, it's a big jump. And so a lot of kids get lost through that process and never really develop passion or love or any interest in math. Right. So because of that, what they do is that they actually introduce complex concepts early. Like in third grade, my, um, my daughter had a problem that required geometric progression to solve it. Mm. Um, which, you know, like, I don't remember it that much. And I was good at math um, and stuff. So, and also I think girls aren't encouraged as much to um, learn math and be better at math. You know, girls are more, and this is not, you know, not all girls, many are encouraged and stuff, but as of what I've noticed is, this is my experience, what I've noticed, what I've seen is girls aren't encouraged as much to pursue math to they're not really encouraged to understand numbers or money or taxes or any of that stuff. And so <clears throat> a lot of times they start relying on first their parents, then their spouse potentially to take care of all the, those things. And, and what we're trying to do with this project is not only educate women on math that is required for accounting, which is not, we're not talking about calculus here. I mean, really accounting is more algebra, like knowing how to manipulate a few numbers in, in an equation. But um, but that's kind of the idea. So we want to um, help women learn. And again, stay-at-home dads are welcome to, to join. Um, and I'll talk about the process and everything. But basically, we're looking for to give you tools to understand not only how to do bookkeeping so you can become a bookkeeper, but also to launch your own business. Mm -hmm. How many businesses fail because of mis mismanagement and, of cash? And, and, and every business out there needs somebody looking over their numbers. Yeah. And if it's you as a owner of that business, that's fine too. I used to say that everybody needs to learn accounting in college and people would laugh at me. And I'm like, even doctors need to learn because, you know, you open your own practice. You need to understand if you're making money, if you're cash flow positive, like you need to understand those basics. Otherwise you'll be out of business. And, oh, you and know, and, and I see, <clears throat> I see all these businesses spending lots of money on marketing, which I'm grateful for because we have a marketing company, but you know, and then they're sending their, their, their staff to learn social media and do this and do that, but they don't send anybody to go learn bookkeeping. You know, they'll send all their bookkeeping out to a third party, which is fine. The problem is, is why not send, if you're going to send them out to learn marketing or systems or all this other stuff, send them out to learn numbers. Yeah. You know, and that way they're more valuable to your own company. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I do believe that <laughs> as a business owner, you should also know some basics because, you know, and it hasn't been that common, but I'm sure it's more common than I know. I worked for several companies where their trusted person who knew the numbers was stealing. Mm -hmm. So you can't tell if you don't know, if you don't look, you can never tell. Yeah. There, there are so many stories out there of companies um, losing money you know, bleeding money. They don't know why. And then it comes back to the person that's, you know, whether it's a, a company that they trusted all these years to, to, to look over their, 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 you know, finances, it's gone. Yeah. You know, why not have internal staff that at least looks over it to make sure that the third party is doing the right way yeah. on their 100%. job. 100%. <clears throat> Yeah. But, you know, it, it, it's it's the progression that you've had over the years, you know, to 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 not only I mean, I can see your book in the background, which is great, <clears throat> you know, but you've always been at the forefront of educating people. You know, why why do they need to do this? You know, who can you help? Who who benefits? And And so it's not just about making money. It's about empowering people to take a chance on themselves, to learn something. To, and, and, and like you said, maybe they can start a business doing it. Absolutely. And, you know, I've always, like at this uh, nonprofit, it's a 501c3, so it's a charitable organization. The, the, all contributions are tax deductible. But I started it in 2012. So I wanted to do good, to create good early on, right, in my career. Um, well, midway through my career so far. But um, I've done a couple of events where we've, you know, talked to people and explained some financial basics and the turnout wasn't great because people, what I found is that, and there's statistical support for it, um, that people are more comfortable talking about sex than money, <laughs> which is, which I found very, very interesting. Um, but People just don't show up and they're like, okay, like, I don't need to go and learn about it and stuff. And more um, immigrants, for especially first generation immigrants who just moved here, those people are usually very interested because they want to learn and they, many of them don't find, you know, typical corporate careers and they want something where they can earn a living and often it's a business. So my book is really good for them. Um, and it's a fairly inexpensive way to learn how to do it better from the start. But in terms of um, this bookkeeper project, um, right now what we're doing is we're um, accepting applications for scholarships from four different groups. Um, one is teens because teens um, are our immediate future. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who will drive the statistics of the US. Um, as of 15 years ago-ish, um, we were a negative um, savings meaning that we spend more than we make, which is not, you know, not a surprise, I'm sure to you. Um, and so typically um, what I would, I mean, not typically, but I, what I would want to do is I want to empower teens who are willing to do it because I don't believe in free education, but when it's education that's earned, whereas you apply for a scholarship, you fight for it and you get it, it's valued you can obtain this skill and that skill can carry them through whatever, no matter what they decide to do in life. They decide to become an engineer, great, they'll know some numbers. They decide to become a doctor, great, they'll be able to manage their own business. They decide to become a full-time mom, great. They'll be able to maybe make some money on the side and feel independent. The second group is, um, and by the way, um, as of mm, seven, eight years ago, there was an article in Accounting Today that talked about how 75% of tax preparers are over the age of 65. So we're looking at a massive exodus of um, tax preparers. The accounting enrollment in colleges has been down for years. So we're really, really looking at a huge gap, which AI will supplement, but not take over for at least two decades. Right. So we're looking at a really high demand of um, accountants and bookkeepers. And bookkeeping is the essence of accounting. It's accounting 101. That's what it is. And so um, our second group after teens and teens are the ones who will be taking over that tax and mm -hmm. accounting stuff, right? And bookkeeping is always the essence of all tax work. 
So um, then we have moms, so teens, moms, <coughs> excuse me. Um, moms for obvious reasons that I've already discussed. Excuse me, I'm just gonna get a sip of water. And then we have a first generation immigrants because uh, bookkeeping is a skill. Mm -hmm. It's a skill that you can always make money with, mm -hmm. always earn a living. So <clears throat> when you learn the skill as a first gen immigrants, okay, my throat is killing me. <laughs> Not sure what's going on. So when it's a skill, um, you can always earn a living. So I'm passionate about teaching people skills and it could be, you know, medicine is a skill. Mm -hmm. Law is a skill, but it's much harder to get into those professions. Engineer is a skill than it is to get into <clears throat> accounting and bookkeeping. So that's why we're teaching first generation immigrants. Plus it teaches them some skills on how to manage money. Because when somebody, you know, I watched my best friend come to US mm, 13, 14 years ago and we went to the bank, we went to the social security office and she was looking with eyes like this big at all. Of this. She didn't understand any of that debit card, credit card, like forget it. So watching her go through that process, because when I came, I was also looking at it like this, but it was slightly different because I was 19. I was, you know, I didn't have any kids. I was young. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Don't die on me. <laughs> shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I was young and I was, you know, I could figure it all out, which I did. Mm -hmm. But first gen immigrants who move here with kids, for example, right? Um, sometimes it's really hard. Yeah. And yeah so I, there's a, there might be a language barrier, culture barrier, but you know, with, with bookkeeping numbers don't lie and, and numbers are universal. Yeah. So those are three. And then my, uh, the last and final group for now, again, we'll expand as we grow, we'll expand to other groups and we'll accept, of course, for moms, we'll accept dads um, who stay at home as well. But the fourth group is abuse survivors. So when I came to the United States, um, I got into an abusive relationship within a couple of months. And, uh, you know, I was 19, so I really couldn't tell um, that somebody's an alcoholic, for example, right? And what that meant. Um, and then, you know, a couple of, maybe five, six years ago, I went to Aruba with my family and um, I was buying something at a store and the store clerk was like, oh, um, do you want to donate your change um, to one of these three charities? And one of them was um, uh, assault and abuse survivors. Mm -hmm. And I donated to that. <clears throat> and uh, she was like, oh, this one gets the least amount of money. Wow. And the reason is people think that if it's so bad, you can leave. <laughs> Which yeah. is true. If you've been through that, or if you know somebody who's been through that, it's not that simple. Mm -hmm. Because you have this reality that's not real, that's not accurate, but you have this reality and you can't see outside of it. And often with abuse, um, there's financial abuse involved, mm -hmm. especially when you have kids and you're staying at home. Um, you're definitely, you know, the money sometimes is being withheld and things like that. So what I'm trying to hoping to do with this is with abuse survivors and teens and moms and um, first generation immigrants is to give them the tool to not only build their skills, make a living, make better financial decisions, but also to maybe prevent abuse or limit the abuse. You know, when you know that you can stand on your two feet, even if you have kids as a, as a parent, um, you can escape. Potentially. So that's kind of why I've launched this project. I think there's a way to do good. And I'm initially going after, you know, accounting firms and financial firms because to them, that's their direct um, business, right? Uh, accounting firms and financial firms, the bottom, the, the core of what they do is account bookkeeping. And so when we raise this new generation of people who have the skill, who know how to do some basics, not only does that serve them, but it serves you because you get to recruit people who actually know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and of course we have, you know, um, in, the, in the plan we have for next year, we have a tax preparation course and a business basics bootcamp um, as well. Again, all of that to promote financial independence or give you the oh, you know, and, and, and I wouldn't 
I wouldn't discount other services either. I mean, you talk about you talk about accountants and 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 others, but you know, churches are a good resource. They are always hiring. Uh, they need accountants or bookkeepers, and 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 they like to work with, you know, uh, immigrants. They like to work with moms, so it benefits both. So right. they're getting a service. The people are getting hired. They're, you know, everybody's happy. Yeah. <clears throat> That's so great, it's, it's great idea. And, 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 you know, there's, there's a lot of churches that need help. I worked for a church many years <laughs> ago <laughs> as a bookkeeper. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's, I mean, it may not always pay the greatest, but yes. the experience that they're going to get and, and, and usually churches are very welcoming. And so they feel that they're in a safe space to begin with anyway. So it's, it's, you know, it, it, it might be something that you want to, to expand on. Definitely, definitely. Now you brought it down. Actually, thank you for that. You know, but the the um, <clears throat> the resources that you have on on the site, and being that you know you're you're really the goal isn't for you to make money. It's for others to make money to learn a skill to 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 like we said be empowered. You know, and and, and you know for for my own story when I started my my one business long ago, I had gone to an accountant. That accountant ripped me off so bad because I didn't understand the numbers. And, uh, you know, so the following year, I I prepped myself. I learned all these accounting tricks and tips and all this other stuff. And I'm like, I should really go back and, 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 and you know, uh, refile because, you know, I would have made more money. Did you? I didn't, I, but I, I did the, you know, I, I, that, that second year, I, 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 uh, you know, redid all the, my numbers to them. I'm like, wow, I'm getting all this money back. I'm like, and, and, <laughs> and you know, it, it's, it's I, one of the big, big things, uh, you know, is, is that earned income credit. I don't qualify for it anymore. My kids are too old and I make too much money, but <laughs> for, for, Poor family, I can't say poor, but for families that just don't make enough or have a lot of kids, that earned income credit really helps them. Absolutely. And 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 a lot of accountants have this, and, and this is what the guy said. He says, well, he goes, you didn't earn enough to qualify. And he goes, you're self-employed. You shouldn't get it. What? And he goes, <laughs> you didn't pay in. You shouldn't get it. And I'm like, dude, you're an accountant. Give me the money. Yeah, so, what do you work for? Me or yeah, me? So it was, I, I just, I, I, you know, the funny thing is about 10 years later, he hired me to do some work for him. He didn't remember who I was and I, I got my <laughs> money back. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But, you know, it, it was, uh, it was, uh, there are a lot of, of, of people out there that just don't have the information, you know? So if you can, train somebody if you can hire somebody that's already trained and and you know the way you do things is very ethical you know it, it, it's it's and and you're very stringent on 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 the training that you do and and i mean I've, I've known you for years and and you just don't you just don't do something half-assed it's just absolutely you know you value the people that come to you you value the information that you're to teaching them and and it, it's it's you know i appreciate the the honesty the clarity and 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 the fact that you want to give back to the community yeah i'm very passionate about accounting i've been passionate about it since i've really fell in love with it um you know in college i wanted to be an attorney first many years ago and just gave up on that because i loved accounting so much but i also am passionate about better accounting because Unlike where I'm from in Belarus, right? Um, you don't need a degree or a license to be an accountant here. You don't need to have to, a degree to be a bookkeeper. There you do. You have to go to college to become a bookkeeper or an accountant. And because of that, unfortunately, what we have is um, really low quality of bookkeeping because people think that they learn how to use QuickBooks or whatever, any software, and boom, they're bookkeepers. But that's not the case. They're missing out on the foundational accounting knowledge that directly affects um, your work, but also costs clients money and costs them audits and things like that. I had a client 
five, six years ago, um, my first proactive tax reduction client, his bookkeeper didn't know and his accountant never looked. Um, mm -hmm. The client had like $600,000 worth of income and half of it was um, what's called carried interest, which is subject to a preferential tax rate. Cost them 50 grand in tax, federal tax alone. 60 with New York and New York City. That's, that's crazy. Like these types of mistakes happen because we don't have good education. People think that just learning the software will do it for them, but that's actually not the case. And I, you know, being in the receiving end of that service, I'm really passionate about educating people to do better work. The problem mm -hmm. is sometimes people don't want to learn to do better work. Oh, that's a and, and, conversation. And, and sometimes an update will cause the software to be wrong. Yeah. And I've had that. I have, I have a tax preparation program. And I noticed this year there was information that was not correct as opposed to last year. And so I'm double checking. I'm thinking, okay, why isn't this lining up? I contacted the company and then I said, you know, there's an error here. You need guys, you need to check it out. Wow. And it took them, it took them a month, but they did get the update through and, and, and they sent a patch out. Well, I think it was too late. You know, way too many people have probably had already used the program to file their taxes. Imagine how many are going to get audited. You know, it, it just maybe maybe none of them will. But just you know that that fear of getting audited is just uh, I think can be more overwhelming than than the actual audit. But <laughs> I mean, getting audited is one thing, but then the second thing is you don't know if you've pay you're paying the correct amount of tax. Mm -hmm. You don't want to underpay as much as you don't want to overpay, right? You want to pay the correct amount. You want to pay the minimum legally allowed. That's what your taxpayer bill of rights number three says. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overpay or underpay because if you if you underpay, you get audited. It will it will um, be additional penalties and things like that, which nobody wants. But overpaying, nobody wants that too. But you can be sure if you don't know. Oh, uh, so you know, I I was I was just happy that I had to pay more taxes uh, than Trump did. <laughs> no I, and and you know what love him or hate him you know he has brilliant people that he's you know had that that have have you know maximized the tax code to his advantage and yes. and so you know you look at that and go wow he paid zero taxes or he paid 75 bucks and here i am going yeah i paid tens of thousands what the hell you know so now i'm not like i'm diving deep into this these tax programs i'm going Okay, where can I save? What can I do? And the thing is, I don't know everything. But, you know, if I had a bookkeeper beside me that knew what I wanted, how I wanted, and 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 took advantage of all this, they could have saved me thousands. That's right. And what's interesting is that, you know, like you said, love him, I hate him, but uh, Trump has probably a bunch of people like me saving him money on tax and strategy and all of that. But that's besides the point. What I've encountered in my career is that there are a lot of people who are like, okay, it costs this much, but it's going to save me this much. That makes sense. That's it. Let's do it. Yeah. There are some people who see that and say, well, I don't want to pay you this much. Mm -hmm. So they have a problem with that big check. Um, even though in the end, by the end of the year, they're actually in a better position. Mm -hmm. But that's that's mindset and that's okay accounting has been commoditized for for decades and it will take time to reverse that for sure yeah it, it's it's uh you know but the numbers don't lie you know if done properly they can show you your business strengths your business weaknesses sorry there was a spider came down from nowhere and almost attacked me while i was on this project <laughs> you know nothing like i you know and i, I hate spiders but <laughs> you know that's the joy of these podcasts sometimes when you're doing them live stuff happens so yeah. but where was i <laughs> that spider scared the shit out of me we i don't, were talking I don't about know taxes. what i was talking about taxes and accounting and commodity yeah it, it, it's it's uh oh yeah yeah you know one done properly the numbers don't lie they tell you your strengths and weaknesses and 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 why not spend money if you're going to make money, Absolutely. if it's going to legitimate, if you can see that it's, oh, well, don't say, oh, it's going to cost me a thousand bucks. If it's going to make you 10,000, I will do that deal all day long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, people look at the, 
people look at the the, the price. Um, and, and same same with books. They'll say, well, I don't want to spend fifty dollars for a book, but the information in that book could make you millions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, they they price it by the pound. You know, it just it it, it irritates me, but. That's how people think, and and I I think that's that's the the problem with with um, you know, and, and I'm not trying to put down H and R Block or or any of these these you know franchised you know bookkeepers, but basically the people that they hire really don't know bookkeeping. They use a program. They just understand the program. So yeah. why do you continuously go there year after year after year? When you can hire somebody that knows your business, that knows your numbers, that knows what you're about and 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 how they can save you money. I, I just Honestly, no, like people with the, just the W-2 or W-2 and some interest should either use TurboTax or HR Block. It's when you have a business, even if it's just freelance, is mm -hmm. where the danger is. Like if you have a rental, if you have a freelance, that's when you need a professional because like my husband, before I became a big shot accountant, he used to do his taxes in TurboTax years ago. Um, and what was interesting is that either he missed it or the program didn't ask him or whatever that, you know, whatever happens, happened there. Um, he did not, was not um, taking depreciation on his rental mm -hmm. for five years. Yeah. And the problem is that you're considered to have taken it, even if you haven't taken it yeah. when you sell. So that's something, just one example of how, mm -hmm. how it could affect you. You know, it's a simple thing, but it was missed and that's it. And we're talking about 20 grand of a deduction. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think I, I, I've, I've, I've read about this because, um, you know, my neighbor also owns properties and he's like, I don't make money on the rent. I make money on the depreciation. Absolutely. And, and a lot of people forget to depreciate. That's what I tell people who ask me. Sometimes I get people who ask me, oh, like I want to start like get into the rentals and stuff. I'm like, you don't make money on the rental. You just make sure that you're cash flow positive. Mm -hmm. where, you, where you make money is the deduction for depreciation. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if, if we go back to talking about Trump, that's how he makes a lot of his money. Absolutely. It's all depreciation. And, and it's and it's one of the powerful tools that you can use. And, and it's it's overlooked by a lot of people. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can't rely on on um you know people who have gone like h and block people get like one week course or something mm -hmm. which is crazy just crazy yeah. and they get to do business tax returns it blows my mind <laughs> so how do people find out about the bookkeeper project and and i i do know that you know I, I looked at the website and you have other projects that are coming up it's like every quarter you now you got another project another something that that can benefit somebody and, and i think that's awesome yeah thanks so much i, I <laughs> really am product of passion and wanting to give back and create a raise the bar really for accountants and bookkeepers in terms of the quality of work and also create a better life for people who actually do that work and then so accounting firms definitely benefit from it um, by investing in it but also like you said churches and financial companies but um, right now we're starting with the financial side of things so we're starting with a bookkeeper project we're looking at four cohorts to start, it's um, it's um, softened. I call it softened. It's just a um, Society for Financial Independence .org, um, where you can find information about it. But uh, next year, we're going to launch the tax preparation project so that the accounting firms can get more, can kind of fill the gap of retiring tax pros and things like that. But also, when you understand tax, you do your bookkeeping better. I know from my personal experience. And then we'll also launch a book, um, a business boot camp next year. But also, what we're looking at long term is creating programs that are apprenticeship style programs like this one mm -hmm. for other things. Like I have somebody who has a, a sheet metal business, and he was saying how like there's not enough of apprentices um, wanting to get trained, but mm -hmm. it's a skill. It's a mm -hmm. skill like any 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 other. Plumbing, you know, so we'll collaborate with other organizations to to get that going as well, because we, I'm passionate about teaching people skills. I think that everybody should have a skill of bookkeeping. Not everybody needs the skill of tax, but when you have that bookkeeping skill and then maybe potentially another skill like sheet metal or what, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. um, you can actually start um, 
earning a living and always be confident you can always survive and mm -hmm. and have a good life yeah it's yeah I, and i i you know it, it, it's funny because you know back in the 50s in the united states we had more independent entrepreneurs and and that's basically you know <clears throat> what ran the world you know and and, and but fast forward to today and and that, you know, and I've been an entrepreneur for 30 years, but <clears throat> they discourage entrepreneurship in, in college. They want you to be a follower. They want you to go work for someone else, you know, but there's still that drive. People still have that drive to be their own boss, to do their own thing. And, and, and I think that, you know, your, your project, the bookkeeper project will help not only does the future generation learn numbers, but become an entrepreneur, you know, and, and, and it's, they, they have to know numbers and I'm not saying they have to love them, but I think if they understood numbers better, they wouldn't be so intimidated and, and they could actually learn not only a skill, but, you know, become an entrepreneur and teach others. Absolutely. You know, uh, there's a funny story. My sister, um, she's 10 years younger and she, since she was 15 or 16, she was involved with photography and really wanted to be a photographer. And she's a photographer. She's a good one. But um, I was telling her when she came to the U.S., I was telling her, it was almost 10 years ago. I told her, like, you need to know how to do bookkeeping. I told my, my best friend, told my best friend also who came in 2011, you need to learn bookkeeping. And my, both my friends said, oh, no, when uh, she was an engineer by education, she was like, oh, no, when I go into medical field, my sister was like, no, I'm more creative, not into numbers. And guess what? Both of them, one of one is a bookkeeper, the other one is an accountant. Mm -hmm. Like, because like, <laughs> you can make money with photography, but it's not steady income. You have to work weekends. And my sister doesn't want to work weekends. Uh, my, my best friend tried the healthcare route um if you will worked as a home health aide for a few for a year got accused of stealing which she would never steal and stuff and just was like screw healthcare i'm going to accounting <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a uh, you know and i i know so many people um that you know were accountants that work for big firms they're making lots of money and some of them have relied on programs for so long they internally forget how to do stuff. So they have to rely on the bookkeeper to do the work. And I'm like, okay, well, if you're the bookkeeper, why don't you just start your own business and, and, and field the work? I mean, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just funny. The scariest part of that, of what you just said, is that these people go to colleges and teach bookkeeping course. They haven't done bookkeeping in, in decades. Right. And they go and teach that. So th that's to me is scary because we do, I work in bookkeeping every single day. Mm -hmm. I give working knowledge in the training and, and everything else where with somebody who hasn't done it in, in two decades, it's really hard to learn from them. And the, like, I would question the quality of that, which is again, initially why one of the reasons why I created the training, but this training through the bookkeeper project will include that pre-recorded training plus cohort based support mm -hmm. cases and Q and A and, all of that, which is going to be much more comprehensive. So basically, so, you know, if, if, if there's people listening or watching this on, on YouTube, how can they donate to the cause? How can they help you, um, you know, recruit more people or, or, you know, can they send people to you? Can they, can they donate money? What, what can they do? They can send people to the website, um, soffind.org. Um, so it stands for shortened version of Society for Financial Independence. There are applications there for all four groups for now. Um, again, we'll expand later, but there are applications there. So people have been already applying, which is cool. And um, you can either use the donate button, but for, so basically we're looking for $1,500 per student um, donation. So you can donate any amount, but just keep in mind that we are um, like if you're donating three thousand, we can set, we can take two students um, as a cohort. So that's kind of uh, where you are, where you can find it. And on the website, there's an email, there's a phone number. Give us a call. We can create a custom um, 
invoice for you to donate based on your goal. You know, some companies or churches or communities may want to invest in their own community so we could create a cohort for just their community. Um, and they would sponsor that through a scholarship and stuff like that. So there are all these options available on the website. So definitely check it out. Awesome. So please, everybody, if you're if you're listening, I hope you are, uh, go to uh, soffind.org, donate. <clears throat> Man, now I'm choking up. <clears throat> Probably was that spider. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, and, and if you know somebody that could, could benefit from this project, have them sign up. Uh, I think it's a wonderful project. I think it's going to help so many. I think it's going to help you know, people become entrepreneurs through bookkeeping. And and I think that's going forward. Uh, yes, you know, I think AI is going to be an important tool, but yeah. having a bookkeeper watch your numbers is going to be beneficial for every entrepreneur out there. So Absolutely. thank you for being here. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks so much. Adios. Guys.